everyone. Welcome to our Carls by Lamplight service. It is good once again to see our meeting house so well filled. To all of you a very warm welcome and especially to those who are visitors with us. And as I glance around, I see that we have quite a few visitors. So it's lovely that you have been able to join us this evening and we thank you for coming. After this service, you are all invited into the Stuart Hall for tea and coffee and seasonal treats. We are not taking up an offering during this service, but you can contribute in a retiring offering if you so desire, and offering plates will be available at the various exits as you leave. There will also be a plate at the door of the Stuart Hall, and if you want to contribute um, anything, then that will go to charitable causes. We meet tomorrow morning, Christmas Day, at 10 a.m. for our Christmas Day service, so do come to that. Remember the birthday boy, remember the birth of Jesus, and do come and join us at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. Then next Sunday, God willing, will be our uh, the last day of 2023 and the last Lord's Day of 2023. So we shall meet for our final congregational worship at 11.30 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. So we're here to worship Almighty God. And the choir are going to lead us into our worship, singing the introit, sing joy to the word. Jesus, the wonderful one, he is greater than any ruler, mightier than any warrior, nobler than any king, wiser than any sage, bigger than any kingdom, better than any crown, lovelier than any name, worthy of our worship, deserving of our praise. Let us encourage one another, even as those 
shepherds did who first heard the message of the Savior's birth. And let us in our hearts and minds say to one another, let us go even now unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord has made known unto us. The Lord has made it known unto us already. And we are here tonight to give thanks to him for the unspeakable gift of his only begotten son, the Lord Jesus. So come watch with us this Christmas night. Our hearts must travel far to darkened hills and heavens bright with star on shining star. We stand to sing our opening congregational carol. together in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, we gather here to worship you on this Christmas Eve. The angels sang when Christ was born, and so must we. With thankful hearts, we celebrate his nativity and lift up our voices to you in joyful praise. With the heavenly host we cry glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Accept, O Lord, our worship 
And as we hear again the Christmas story in word and song, show us something more of your great love in Jesus Christ, your Son, our Saviour. Gracious God, we thank you again for the unspeakable gift of your dear Son, eternal word, yet a child without speech, clothed in glory, yet robed in swaddling bands, Lord of heaven and earth, yet laid in a manger. To you, O Jesus, strong in your weakness, glorious in your humility, mighty to save, be all praise and glory, along with the Father and the Holy Spirit, both now and forever. Lord, grant your help to everyone taking part in our service tonight, to those who read the scriptures, to Sarah and the choir as they sing their anthems, to the preacher in the pulpit, to the people in the pews. And through all of this, lead all of us to the crib of the Christ child, to the cross of the Savior, and to the crown of righteousness that never fades away. So we lift up our voices in praise, we bow our hearts in prayer, and we pray, O God, that we be here from you, the living God. And when we hear, may we obey for Jesus' sake. Amen. We stand to sing our second congregational praise on Christmas night. All Christians sing to hear the news the angels bring. And then after this, the service will flow through unannounced until the word of thanks. Let us again praise God. This reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 to 6. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes, or decide by what he hears with his ears. But with righteousness he will judge the needy. With justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. 
he will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips, he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt, and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together. And the little child will lead them. Amen. This reading is taken from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38, the birth of Jesus foretold. In the sixth month, God sent the angel, Gabriel, to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, 
and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. Amen. Luke chapter 1, verses 46 to 55, Mary's song. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones and has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful. To Abraham and his descendants forever and just as he had promised for his ancestors. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home. Amen.
Matthew chapter 1, commencing at verse 18. Joseph accepts Jesus as his son. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother, Mary, was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Amen.
Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 7, the birth of Jesus. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Amen. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a saviour, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. 
And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go, even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary, and Joseph, and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things, and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Amen.
we'll turn now to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, reading verses 1 to 12, titled, The Wise Men Visit the Messiah. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently, what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child, and when you have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Amen.
John chapter 1, reading verses 1 to 14. The Word became flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made, without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God, his name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born, not out of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen.
want at this stage in the service, as I do every year, to say a word or two of thanks to various people. As you might imagine, this kind of a service doesn't just happen with lots, without lots of people um, weighing in and pulling their weight and doing various things. So I want to, first of all, thank all those who have been responsible for setting up the stage and reassembling it in various forms over the past week. Our thanks to them for the doing of that. Our thanks to Jennifer and Deborah and Dawn, who um, decorated not only this Christmas tree here in the meeting house, but um, various Christmas trees throughout our church premises. I want to say thank you to Leslie Bell and Johnny Bell and Adam Crawford, um, who looked after our oil lamps um, this year. Um, that particular role usually fell to John Cousins and Ricky Busted, but John is away in England visiting his family, so he is unable to be here tonight. And Ricky Busted, after many years of organizing the oil lamps, has stood down from doing that um, this year, but our thanks to both of those gentlemen for past years, and our thanks, as I say, to um, Leslie Bell, Johnny Bell, and Adam Crawford for looking after that particular matter um, this evening. I want to uh, thank Aaron Shannon, who organized the printing of the orders of service, and also thank those folk down on the sound desk for their work tonight. And indeed, um, all those um, who look after our PowerPointing matters um, throughout the year. This is the kind of work that takes place quietly. Um, not everybody can do it, but we thank those who do do it and who look after it. And you'll all be very thankful that I'm certainly not looking after um, PowerPointing matters because it is something I know absolutely nothing about. But we're grateful to all those who do help us in that respect. I want to say thank you to all the people who read the various uh, Bible passages this evening, and uh, they all did so, so very well, and we're grateful to them for their help. Thank you to those who have prepared the coffee and, tree and, uh, coffee and tea and seasonal treats, which will be available afterwards, and we hope many of you are able to stay behind for a further time of um, conversation and informal Christian fellowship. And then, last but by no means least, a very sincere word of thanks and appreciation once again to Sarah and to the choir. We, in this congregation, are blessed to have um, a choir such as we do, week by week, they lead our praise, they minister to us in song and music, and on a night like this, of course, um, they excel themselves, as is the case this evening. And we're very grateful to you, Sarah, for your leadership of the choir, and we're very grateful to all the ladies and gentlemen behind us here um, for lifting our hearts. It isn't a concert, it is a service of worship, and as we've listened our hearts have been lifted um, to a higher plane and surely even closer to our God and maker and saviour. So we're very grateful to all of you for your ministry to us tonight. And even though it isn't a concert, you might want to show your appreciation to them for all that they've done. <laughs> Now we're all going to stand and we're going to sing our next carol, Ding Dong, Merrily on High in Heaven, the Bells Are Ringing.
was not born in a palace, yet he commands the loyalty of more subjects than all the kings and rulers who have ever lived. He never signed a single decree, but has more influence than any president or prime minister. He never used armed force, yet he exerts more power than all the military might the world has ever known. He never toured the world, appeared on television, or attended command performances, yet no celebrity has ever drawn more affection. There is no king like this king. He is the king of kings. Jesus Christ left the mystery of being with God and came to live with us. He shared in the happiness of family life, but he also knew what it was to be hungry and homeless, tortured and killed. He experienced, like us, the temptation to be self-centered, but unlike us, he did not yield to that temptation. No one could fault him or find fault in him. He pleased God in every way. And finally, in an act of supreme love, he gave his life as a payment for our failure, for your sins and mine. Because Jesus Christ was born and died, your sin can be forgiven. Now the way is open for you to be accepted into God's family. You can receive the gift of spiritual life, life more abundant, eternal life. And so at this Christmas time, there comes again to us the challenge to be changed. But the king, the king wants more than a temporary blip of change, not a change that is seasonal and which is thrown out with the Christmas wrapping and the turkey bones. He wants to change us from the inside out. He wants to make us new people with new values and new loyalties. By right, the king could barge into our lives, but he never forces an entrance. Instead, he waits at the door of our lives, and he knocks. And where meek souls will receive him, still the dear Christ enters in. At Christmas time, many decisions have to be made. What size of a turkey will you order? What color of a tie will you buy for Uncle Jack? How many toy shops will you ring up to find that elusive toy that you haven't been able to find thus far? Many decisions to be made. But the most crucial decision of all is still this. What will I do? with Jesus. And so tonight, I urge you to fling open the door and to welcome the king into the throne of your life and start a new life, a life which lasts forever. Mild he lays his glory by, born that man no more may die, born to raise the sons of earth, born to give them second birth. And that's what you need this Christmas above everything else. This Christmas you may receive some gifts that you don't really need at all. Another pair of socks, another box of chocolates. You may not need those things as such at all, but here is something that each one of us need. We need Christ. We need the forgiveness of sins. We need to be made right with God. We need to be made ready for eternity. Have you made that choice? 
Have you made the choice of Christ to be your saviour? And day by day beyond that, will you make the choice that he will be your Lord and that you will yield your life day by day by day to him? As many as received him, we heard in our final reading this evening, as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. That's what you need this Christmas. You need this new birth. You need Christ, which will raise you to a new status, that of being a child of God. What an honor, what a privilege to be a child of God instead of a child of wrath. And you'll be granted a new destiny, that of heaven instead of hell. And so I urge you then to do as those shepherds did, come to Christ, to do as those wise men did, bow before him, give him your heart, give him your worship, give him your life, give him your future, take Christ into your life this Christmas, because Christmas isn't Christmas till it happens in your heart. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, what a privileged people we have been this evening. We have the freedom and liberty to gather here on this Christmas Eve. We have the privilege of lifting our voices to you in songs of praise. We've been privileged to listen to the anthems sung by the choir. We have been privileged to listen to the living word of God being read in our hearing. We have had the privilege of listening to your word being preached. Privilege upon privilege, blessing upon blessing. And Lord, we recognize that with such privileges and with such blessings come responsibilities. And so, Lord, we would pray as our Carl's by Lamplight service comes to a close tonight, we would pray, O oh God, that should there be anyone in this service tonight who has not yet yielded their life to the Lord Jesus, we pray, O oh God, that you would reveal yourself to them and that they would hear your voice and sense the Spirit knocking at the door of their heart and swing their heart's door widely open while they may. And Lord, for those in our congregation this evening who can look back to a time when they had already done that, we pray that such people would renew their allegiance to the King of Kings and their love for Jesus again tonight. And over this Christmas period and then into 2024, that such folk, that such folk would serve you, O God, with heart and soul and mind and strength because there is no king better than Jesus. There is no friend better than Jesus. He is the wonderful one. And we pray, O oh God, that in our service this evening that he has been exalted. And in his dear name we pray. Amen. We're going to sing our closing carol, Hark, the Herald Angels Sing. That will be followed by the benediction. And then after the benediction, would you please take your seats and remain seated for the choir's vesper et in terra pax and on earth peace. And remember, you're invited into the church hall um, for tea, coffee, and seasonal treats afterwards. Hark. The herald angels sing.
may the grace of the King, the Lord Jesus, and the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the blessed fellowship of the Holy Spirit be our portion this Christmas Eve, this Christmas time, and forevermore. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the Vesper.